And we're gonna do a free body diagram for any kind of car, any kind of car that you may have made, whatever it's powered by, whether it's a real car powered by an internal combustion engine or some of your engineering project cars that are powered by mouse traps, rubber bands, balloons, whatever source of energy you are using to power your car, we're gonna give you an example that will apply to any of them. Um, we're gonna focus on just the forces that are affecting your car. So let's start drawing our car. First, let's draw the ground that it's driving on. So while I'm drawing the car, can you please tell me what is the objective of a free body diagram? Why are we drawing them in the first place? What do they help us do? Very good, to show the forces at play. That's one, yep, to show what forces are affecting the object, exactly true. And then once we can visualize all of the forces affecting something, what do we do with that information? Very good, the net force. So we do two things. We visualize all of the forces acting on an object. And then we're using that to figure out the net force affecting the object. Now we could do this mathematically in a little bit more of an advanced physics class, actually calculating net force. But with these examples, we just wanna be able to visualize and understand it. We don't need to do the math yet because there's a little, you know, depending on the application, there's some complicated math. Sometimes you need to do like calculus to figure out the net force. So with these examples, we're doing two things. Number one, visualize all of the forces affecting an object. And number two, use that information to figure out the net force. So I've drawn our car. This is any kind of car. It doesn't matter what's powering it. What is one of the forces affecting this car? Gravity, absolutely. This car is driving on planet Earth, so we know that it has gravity. So I'm gonna draw just from the center of mass, meaning you know the middle of all of the matter. I'm gonna draw from the center of mass, an arrow depicting the force of gravity and the direction that force is pushing. So in which direction does gravity push on this car? Down, yes. So we'll draw an arrow pointing down and we'll label it with an abbreviation. I'm just gonna do F subscript grav to indicate that that is gravity. That is gravity. Now we have a special word for when we measure the force due to gravity because gravity is an acceleration if gravity accelerates objects, it pushes on them, it creates a force based on their mass. But when we measure that, what do we call it? I'll give you a hint. You're measuring it if you step on a scale in the morning. Weight, exactly. So the weight of this car is how we measure the force of, on it due to gravity. Now, gravity is pushing down on this car, pushing it into the earth, but does it push the earth out of the way? Is this car pushing the earth out of its orbit? No, no, it's not pushing the earth out of the way. It's not accelerating downward. Because it's not accelerating in, downward at all, we know that there has to be some kind of force pushing back up against the car. Do you remember what we call that force when the ground is actually pushing back against something? When any surface pushes back, we have a word for it. Normal force. Yes, it's called the normal force. And the normal force is when anything is pushing against a surface, that surface pushes back against it. Like if you push down on the floor in your room right now, you feel that force in your hands. You feel your weight on your hands because you're not pushing the earth out of your way. The earth pushes back against you. So that force is felt by the car right here on the tires but I'm gonna draw an arrow from the center of mass pointing up 
and I'm going to label that F norm, meaning the normal force. Meaning the normal force. Okay. Now there are some other forces affecting this car. Let's depict the force of, of the car itself, the force that comes from within the car. Now, it doesn't matter if this car is powered by a combustion engine or powered by a balloon full of air or a rubber band or a spring, whatever that force comes from, we can call it the applied force. We can call it the force applied by the car. And it's a little complicated to draw how that force is converted from a rotation in the engine to a rotation in the axle to a rotation in the wheels and then friction pushing back against the tires. Let's just suffice it to say that there is some kind of force applied to this car that is trying to push it forward, okay? And that is as complicated as we need to make it right now. So we'll draw that force, F, and I'm gonna say APPL for applied. And I should probably make a legend somewhere so we know what all these forces are. Let's do it in the lower right here. F norm equals normal force. F grav equals gravity. F APPL equals applied force. Okay, there's one other force that we've talked about in other examples that might be affecting this car, especially depending on how big it is, how big its surface area is, how fast it's going. And we talked about it in terms of when you like you stick your head out of a car window, you feel this force. Yes, drag, exactly. Drag is experienced by this car because for this car to go and travel through the atmosphere, through the air on our planet, it has to push air molecules out of its way. And those air molecules don't want to be moved. Nothing wants to be moved. Everything wants to stay at whatever velocity it currently has. So air likes to just kind of hang out and not be pushed out of the way. That's Newton's first law of motion. So we know that there's a little bit of drag, a little bit of air resistance on this car. So we can label that over here and call it F drag. We can put that in the legend. I know we know what it is. I'll just put in parentheses air resistance. So that's very clear what drag actually is. Okay. And for applied force, I'll put in parentheses generated by the car. That's the force that the car actually makes from inside itself. So now we have a bunch of forces that are affecting this car. That's as complicated as I wanna make this example, but what we do now is we look at all these forces and we figure out what the net force is. Can you define the net force for me? What does that even mean? What is the net force? Exactly, the sum of all the forces. I'm gonna write that on here somewhere. I'll write it right up here, right there. Net force. And if you are a note taker, I recommend that you write this as many times as you can because that'll help you remember it. Net force equals the sum of all forces acting on an object. When we add these all together and both their magnitude, meaning how strong they are, and their direction, meaning what way they're facing, then we'll get the net force. <clears throat> so we have forces pointing up, down, left, and right. Let's start with the up and down forces. Let's imagine that each one of these boxes is one Newton. 
Because remember, the length of the arrows tells us how strong the force is. So we have one, two, three, four newtons of force up. And we have one, two, three, four newtons of force down. So what does that mean our overall up and down force is? When we add together the up and the down, what's the sum of those? When we add them together, it's eight, but this is pointing down, which means it's negative. So let's write that up here. Let's write it in the upper left hand of the paper. F norm, the normal force, that looks like it says nom, nom, F nom, no, F norm equals four Newtons and F grav, the gravity equals negative four Newtons. So now what happens when we add four and negative four, we get zero, we get zero. And that tells us that, that there's no net vertical force. There's no net force in the Y axis direction. Exactly, they cancel each other out. So now let's look at, here and I'm gonna put that this means up and this means down. Let's look at the other forces, the F applied equals, let's count the boxes. It starts in the middle of the box. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 point five. 21.5 newtons right if you were graphing when you go to the right is that the positive direction or the negative direction if you're graphing when you move to the right on the x-axis does that make it more positive yeah it makes it more positive okay good now we have one more the drag Drag is 1, 2.5, 2.5 Newtons to the left. So because it's going to the left, does that make it positive or negative? Negative, exactly. Negative. So when we add together the right and the left, what do we get? take 21.5 and add negative 2.5. What does that come out to? 19, exactly. So we know that the net force is gonna be going to the right, 19 Newtons. So this would be 20.5, 19.5, 19. So our net force, let's make that orange. Orange. And that is our F net. So in the examples that you guys are doing, I don't care about the, the quantities that you use. You don't have to use any specific number of boxes. I just want you to make it to scale. So if you know that, if, if you're, for instance, making a catapult and you know that the applied force is the strongest force, well, then you should know to make it the longest arrow. That's all I need to see. I need to so, see that you understand what net force means by you making the strongest forces, the longest arrows and making it make sense. I should be able to look at the arrows on your free body diagram and automatically be able to figure out which direction the net force is. Because what does the net force tell us? What does this mean? Because I know the net force is to the right What's going to happen at this moment in time? Like on this diagram, time is frozen. But what happens if I press play and let this car do whatever it's going to do? What is the car going to do? It 
Exactly, it's gonna start moving. And in which direction is it gonna start moving? To the right, precisely. And we know that because that's the direction of the net force. It's going to accelerate to the right. That's what the net force tells us. <clears throat> in which direction is this thing going to accelerate? And it even tells us how fast is it going to accelerate? But that involves math to figure out how fast. So that's your example for the car. I recommend that you guys put a title on it, whatever it is. It could be title like this, rubber band car. That could be your title. All right. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that it helped you with your free body diagrams and your understanding of the concept of net force. If you have any comments or any other videos that you'd like to see, any lessons you'd like to see short videos on, please leave a comment below. Um, if this video helped you at all, click that thumbs up, click the like button and subscribe to this channel to get alerts whenever we post new videos, either tutorials or helpful lessons to help you through some of this science. Um, thank you and uh, happy learning.